Welcome to Heal Talk Tuesdays with Lisa, where transformation begins as we evoke, embrace, and evolve. There you go. We go. Greetings, 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 and welcome to Real Talk Tuesdays with Lisa. Today, I am so excited and honored to have this incredible guest of mine, uh, Greg Reed. Um, welcome, Greg. And uh, this is so exciting from San Diego to LA and being on live on Real Talk Tuesdays. Um, so thank you very much. Absolutely. I don't know if I ever told you this or not, but the first girlfriend I ever had was your name. <laughs> so I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if you still got my Letterman jacket or something, but I want it back. <laughs> That's a good one. Let them know about this, right? <laughs> uh, so before we go any further, I want to share uh, just a little bit about who Greg Reed is. If you give me a moment, all my uh, viewers, this is why I'm excited because today I have the award-winning author, speaker, film producer, Greg Reed. For over 25 years, Greg has inspired millions of people to take personal responsibility to step into their own greatness. And his life of contribution has been recognized by government leaders, foreign princes, as well as luminaries in education, business, and industries. So Greg has published over 150 books. Uh, 38 and more have become bestsellers. It's been translated to 45 different languages. And some of the books are, listen to this, The Power of Perseverance, the Millionaire man, uh, Mentor, Three Feet from Gold. And I know you have collaborated with some of the greatest books and everyone else. And his latest is The Personal Development, which he's, right? That's it, Personal Development. That's it. You know, this and book I'm so excited about. I didn't even put my name on the cover. The perfect guy is uh, in mentoring, forgets his own, but you don't need to put your name on it. But Greg is known best for being the founder of Secret Knock, which is one of uh, Forbes and Inc. Magazine's top rated event. Not because it's just an event. I am grateful to say I have been attending uh, for the last five years. And you know what? It's no longer a secret, Greg. So welcome to Real Talk Tuesday. There you go. The crowds go wild. First, great <laughs> to see you as always. Yeah, it, it's pretty awesome. That we've it, all the stuff we've gone through and the people we've met and all that good stuff. But I got to say, intentionally, I left my name off, and I'll tell you why. It was all about the messages and not the messenger. I think that's what's getting convoluted in the Instagram. Mm -hmm. world. Everyone's putting themselves up as these gurus and stuff. When at the end of the day, all it is is the same amazing information that's been passed on from generation to generation. And that's what that book's meant to be. You just segued into exactly what my question is, because you're such a great storyteller. Even when we are in secret knock with all the millionaires, billionaires, uh, amazing human beings, this from... The first time I met you, you had the green jacket on, like an Irishman. You were going up and down the uh, hallway. And when I was introduced to you, you turned around, you looked, you did your sideway thing, and you did this. And that's what you are known for. It's with at that very moment, you can stop, you pause, and just like an orchestra, you know how to tell a story with a look. So how did you become such a great storyteller, Greg? I had great mentors. You know, it's interesting. I was trained when I got brand new in the industry by the legendary Les Brown and mm. Victor Hansen and, you know, Brian Tracy and my mentor, Dave Corbin, all these amazing people. And, you know, there's always one little nugget. I remember when I first met Les Brown mm. and, hey, I want to be a speaker like you. Give me one nugget, just one thing I could do different. 
and he did. I hunted him down a month later and said, Mr. Brown, I met you a month ago. I asked for a nugget. You gave it to me. Here's what I did. What should I do next, sir? He was so shocked that someone followed up and followed through that he became not only my buddy, but now we go back and forth and we help one another. And here's was his nugget. It's so simple. He says, when you're holding a microphone, you can tell a senior speaker from a brand new person by one thing. I said, what? He goes, how they hold the mic. And he says, if you hold it right here, like a rap artist, you cover your face, people can't see you. This is what you do to hide. He says, notice all my photographs. I hold it at the end and I keep it out here so people can hear me, but you can still connect with the audience. Right. That's the only one little tip, but I started implementing it. And then I realized every time I spoke behind me was a black backdrop. Mm. And if I had a black suit on, I'd be like a dancing head. So by wearing just the slightest little bit of different colors, you pop off the back of the screen and people will feel like they connect with you using NLP right away. Perfect, which is you are right there with the folks. And so if we would want to talk about story, stories are, are always just like an orchestra, the beginning, the body, and at the ending, right? That's right. So let's go back to who is Gregory, not the one that everybody knows on websites and everything. You come from harsh beginnings. Mm -hmm. Well, I joke about my harsh beginnings, but yeah they're, not like, they're, yeah, they're not like most people. I mean, I grew up in the mean streets of Del Mar along the beach and, you know, our family did quite well and the whole bit. So, you know, I say I was in a street gang growing up in San Diego at night, we'd break into Maseratis and we'd detail them, you know, yeah. <laughs> I don't, I really don't have that thing. I, I, I had personal demons where I've been facing my sobriety. So a lot of people might not know, but I'm 36 year sober guy. But again, you know, congrats. Quit, thank you. I quit when I was 24. So it's lifetimes ago. And so, you know, I don't even fight that anymore. It's just part of the daily life of who I am today. And, you know, we all have trials and tribulations. Um, for example, I can go, yeah, I've been divorced three times. But let me tell you the other really? side. Yeah. But I guess what? I've been divorced three times in the state of California without one lawyer ever involved. Because if you don't lie, cheat, steal, and you're honest and you can communicate, you can transfer your relationships and still stay in touch. In fact, my current ex-wife, you know, Alin is one of the greatest human beings in the world. I got the greatest ex-wife on earth. Yeah. And so it's really interesting. I don't believe our hardships and our tragedies have to be something that we carry around with us like an anchor for our whole lives. You know, not only you have a great relationship with Alin, but she's involved in not necessarily in your daily life, but with your son, and Colin, which is one of the most amazing kids that I have met beyond his age, uh, smart, gregarious and everything. But your family is involved. Even at SK, when we come at the end, your mom is there. So this is so beautiful. It's like what I believe in. It's uh, how you nurture friendships yes. and relationships. So we, I think we did like three different topics here. So yeah, my son uh, Colt is absolutely amazing. He's a dynamite 12 year old kid. And, you know, I've got guests here at the house right now, as you know, and I was kind of in the between meetings and we're talking about this because we understood the power of teaching our kid EQ. A mm -hmm. lot of people focus on IQ and we did EQ, which is emotional intelligence. Right. And so we said, look, if our kid can communicate you, shake your hand, look you in the eye and negotiate a ham sandwich and trade for a Twinkie on the playground, then he knows how to <laughs> get what he wants in life. So that was the mentality that we went at. And back to the storytelling. Yes. So the way that I do speeches is I do something called songs. Uh, and a song is about three minutes long. There's a beginning, mm -hmm. middle, and book. And then it, the audience sees themselves through on the journey. And that's what we work on. I'll give you one right now. In fact, you can pick any topic and I'll do a song based on it. Go ahead. You're, you're, you're on the spot. Give me any topic in the world. Healing. You know, it's been said that we're a reflection of the people we hang around the most in our Income, our attitude, and lifestyle is the average of the group. If you hang around amazing people, amazing things come to be. 
One of my favorite interviews I ever did was a guy named Steve Wozniak. He started Apple Computer with Jobs. And I said, how is it that you guys had so much success? And he says, we embraced our lack. He goes, we didn't mm -hmm. run from it. We ran toward it. He goes, most people, when they have adversity, they feel pain, whatever. They do everything to hide and to avoid it. He goes, we ran right directly towards the eye of the volcano. I said, what do you mean? He says, well, when these microchip processors came out, they were expensive. He goes, Job sold his car. I sold my calculator. We pulled our money to buy one of these magical devices. But Hewlett Packard and IBM would make machines. They go from point A to B with 20 chips. They had all the money of God. They could do whatever they want. He said, so I'd pull away five and figure out how to go from A to B using 15. And then I'd pull away five, and get it to work with 10. Eventually, I found a way to go from A to B using our one chip. He goes, we weren't trying to be innovative or cool or whatever. He goes, we could afford one chip. He goes, but by embracing that as an opportunity, we found the shortest, cleanest path. Mm -hmm. And we changed the way people do personal computing for the rest mm -hmm. of the world. He says, where could you be in your own life if you stop looking at everything as a challenge and obstacle, but it could just be a greatest blessing and opportunity in disguise. There you go. Beginning, middle, and quote, done. Right. So you can literally have, just like Les Brown, he says, when have your key, key uh, phrases, key stories, and then you integrate them exactly where you need to and have the opening and then put the story into it. And at the end, you close it. Right. So the, the beginning is always the same. The ending is always the same. The middle part is never the same. And instead of trying to focus on doing a 20 minute talk or a 60 minute presentation, I just master my two minute songs. And when people say, hey, you have an hour to speak, we only got 12 minutes, no problem. I'll just do my three greatest hits. If people say, hey, someone's, you know, didn't, their plane didn't come in, can you go long? I say, yeah, I'll do my best of album. So to me, it really is, uh, it's, it's simple and easy. And I get to mix up my music, my set list, just like a musician would when they go do a concert. And I get to do it with based the best stories on the audience, which I'm speaking to. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. You know, in your book, uh, the book with the three feet uh, from, from gold, uh, one of the parts of the story, we can relate anything, any part of that to our lives. It's like we keep doing it, doing it, and then we see it's not working and we give up. Mm. How do you mentor? How do you pick the ones that you really want to mentor, knowing that they will go the extra mile to hit the gold, which in effect, you become the rainmaker, but you're in the back backstage making them shine and i've seen so many you pick from audience that you bring them to the hot seat and the year after they're thriving because you've helped them how do you pick who whose story is who you want to work with uh to say yes a lot but with caveat i'll give you an example someone comes up to me and says hey will you mentor me my answer is always yes all you got to do is text me at 10, 10 a.m. on Tuesday and say X, Y, Z. That gets rid of 99% of people because there's work involved. And then the person who does text me at 10, 10, I say, great, Thursday, I'll meet you at this restaurant. All I need you to do is bring two empty lobster shells and a baseball helmet. Well, that gets rid of the other 99% because there's more action. But the person will text me at that time, show up and do what they're directed. The chances are when I give them, you know, uh, things to accomplish and they know that there's some challenge to it, but they're willing to take that action. Those are the people that I know will thrive and excel, but more importantly, teach others to do the same. That's how Napoleon Hill started, right? Yeah. And it's interesting. There's so many different variant stories between Napoleon Hill and W. Clement Stone and, you know, uh, with right. Carnegie and all these different people. But one of the coolest things that Hill did do is he started applying the messages. You know, we all need another seminar or a book or a program like a hole in the head. What we really need to do is start taking action with the information that we already have on hand. And I call it a mirror mentor in the new book, Personal Development. What does that mean? Look, 
no matter what you're going to say in front of me, you're only going to give me the best version of yourself. So I can only give you direction based on that information. However, if you look yourself in the mirror and say, look, knucklehead, this is, you're not doing what you need to do. And you only could give yourself the best direction because you know what you need most, but here's the best part. You also know what you're willing to do. Mm-hmm. So I can sit there and give you the greatest feedback and the roadmap, but if you're not willing to do that, then chances are you'll fail. So I believe it starts with a mirror mentor. Look yourself in that you know, reflection and say, hey, I've had enough and it's time to go. How many times is someone, you know, you're smoking and someone say that's bad for you, it's going to kill you. You're, you got it. But it's until that day you look in the mirror and go, what am I doing? That's the day it stopped. That was going to be, uh, that's a great segue. Who has been, I know you talked about Les Brown. I know you talked about Tracy and everything. But when you are stuck in a challenge, other than the mirror, who do you go to? Who's your mentor go-to person that you can pick up the phone and say, I need five minutes of your time? Well, I do see- you have someone? Yeah, I see counsel and not opinion. Counsel ah. and wisdom, knowledge, mentorship, where opinions based on ignorance, lack of knowledge or inexperience. If I go to a family friend and say, hey, I want to write a book, they'll talk me out of it because I'm dyslexic and they've never written a book. If I go to Mark Victor Hansen and wrote Chicken Soup, he's going to say, sit down, here's what you need to know and give you counsel. So depending upon the circumstance in which I'm at, who is getting the results that I want for myself at that moment, and I seek them. So it's not an actual individual. It's somebody who's excelling. When I wanted to make a movie, I went to people that won Oscars and make movies. When I wanted to write a book, I went to people who wrote book. When I wanted to be a speaker, I went to public speakers. Got it. Talk about movie. I remember years ago, over 10 years ago, I was uh, on on Zoom with uh, Shankowitz. Mm-hmm. And you interviewed uh, Mr. Shankowitz, whose background was a police officer, or no, he was uh, with the, uh, he was in, uh, he was a police officer, wasn't he? Correct. Right. Yeah, 100%. And then when you interviewed, when he started Make-A-Wish Foundation and everything, and you asked him what was his, the reason that he did, and then he said, Mm -hmm. I wanted to make an impact. And with one word, you turned around and said, I will make your wish become a reality, your wish, which he had made an impact in so many people's. And you started the movie. I know you had others helping you. But if you had one wish today, what would your wish be? It's interesting. When I was a kid, young, 17, 18, I made a bucket list of like 60 impossible items. And I remember I crossed them off when I was 50 years old and it was, they were just incredible things. And people say, well, what do you want next? What's your next thing? Mm. I realized for myself, I feel like I've lived a pretty good existence already. So back to my son, Colt, I sat him down and said, what's your bucket list? And he started putting crazy stuff on there and I started helping him cross those off. So to answer your question is my wish is to help him achieve his wishes because I get so much more fulfillment to see someone else succeed than myself. It's the same thing. If someone gives me a, you know, a $2 raise at work is one thing, but watching your kid graduate college, that, that gives you more fulfillment than anything. So my dream and fulfillment is to watch other people succeed. That's beautiful. This is why my heart goes out. And every time I come to Secret Knock, I learn more nuggets. Uh, sometimes uh, we hear it all the time and it doesn't sink until we are ready. And I remember one of the clues that I have utilized with my clientele is the CPC. Mm. Would you like to share about that? Yeah. So I did a book called Wealth made easy and i interviewed people worth a hundred million to a billion dollars and i kept asking them you know their secret of success and one person named mark anthony bates uh said this is it he says cpc it stands for clues patterns choices and he says it's about accountability and responsibility everything that happens is your fault he says if you go out on a first date and she's 20 minutes late that's a red flag but that's your first clue But every time you go out on a date, she's late. That forms a pattern. 
a P. Mm -hmm. He goes, then it's your C, your choice, whether you deal with it, you yell at her, you break up, you tell her a different time, but it's not her fault. She's just late. He said, stop trying to change people to fit in your own paradigm. But we'll see people that will cheat your best friend in business. You do business, things don't go wrong and you're mad at the person. You saw the clue, you followed the pattern, but you made the choice. It'd be like seeing a rattlesnake rattle, bite your kid's sister, you pet it, get bit, and you're mad at the snake. Looking back in life, rarely will we be angry at relationships that failed or negotiations that fell through. We're mm -hmm. mad at ourselves because we saw the clues, we saw the patterns, but we made our choices late. I've had so many mic drops with you already. One of your quotes that I love is, and you share this from stage, from everywhere, a dream, a dream written down becomes a goal. A goal broken into steps becomes a plan. A plan backed by action is where it becomes a reality. So how can you share with our audience and they say you know i'm ha i'm struggling life is this i'm i'm a single mom or a single dad uh everything no matter what's happening outside wealthy is a state of mind but being rich what is richness how can someone say yeah it's easy for you to write it but how do i become it Become rich or become like, I, I, what's the question? The question is, how can you help uh, share for them to shift their mindset to become the wealthy, to become the rich from heart and in person? I know you break it into steps, but if they are viewing right here, right now, and Greg, you've got a star on in Las Vegas, you've got, uh, you've accomplished so much, or some of the SK interviews that you have done, how do we believe to become wealthy? I mean, even Napoleon Hill, we can follow steps, but what does it take to become the wealth, the rich? Yeah, I think for myself, I'm still chasing it. You know, it's like anything else. It, I, yeah. In certain people's world, you think I was doing pretty well. I hang out with people and you're not, unfortunately we live in a comparison world. <laughs> like, uh -huh. It's the most frustrating thing in the world, right? Yeah. No matter what you're doing. I, I remember one time uh, it was interesting. I was at this guy, John Asroff's house and he was in a movie called the secret. It was all about the vision right. board and stuff like that. Well, I was in that house that he had the vision for and all this stuff. And I was making my first movie called pass it on. And I'll never forget, this thing is a mansion in the richest area. This It's just incredible. And we're walking out and someone says, I don't think I'd want to live here. I said, why? I go, this is incredible. The story behind him goes, yeah, but look up on the hill. Look at that house. I go, what about it? He goes, no matter what, every time I walked out, I'd see that house and think I should be there. Oh, Boy, what all? Oh, wow, that's, that's rough. And I did realize on the quest, when we're doing Wealth Made Easy, this is going to be a different answer than you're expecting. But I would not wish someone to be $300 million to $700 million. I wouldn't trade lives with that person for anything. I just, I just wouldn't do it. Uh, the most miserable people I ever met in my life were right in that gap. The new Beverly Hillbillies, the rich people, are $10 million and below. And these are people that had an exit. They did, you know good little score, something good happened to them, inheritance, things of this nature. They get to fly first class, they live this life, their family's got everything. These are the happiest people. Billionaires, pretty happy. I've never met a jerk billionaire, not yet. I, everyone seems to be pretty happy, but these people that are worth like 300 million, it, as crazy of a number that is to you and me, to them, you're so far from that B number. You're thriving and striving and you got three cell phones and ulcers and it's just really interesting to watch just for myself. So going on this quest, like I said, I wish to have 10 million and below or a billion dollars, but that middle part, that doesn't seem to be the sweet spot. I haven't found a happy 300 millionaire yet. Kind of wild. <laughs> I think you are, you come from the heart, even though you have all this and the people that surround you. Yes. Uh, all the, the founders, the CEOs, C-suites and everything. 
many are more of an impact and heart centered. And I've seen it not only with the people you surround yourself, but how you make an impact. And that one time at your house, you had, I, I can't remember his name, but the guy with the animals and the snakes mm -hmm. um, that has the reptile zoo. Gay Brewer. Yes. And right before you started uh, Prosperity Camp, we were outside and filming on a Heel Talk Tuesday, and he was, um, I was interviewing, he put a tarantula on my arm, and then afterwards, you asked me, how was that tarantula? And until that very moment, believe it or not, I didn't know that a tarantula is more vicious or scarier to have than a snake. So you brought the most amazing people in there. And I can say my fear of snakes, I overcame them and tarantula. I do you know they're worse than snakes, but you surround yourself with people, not only who they are, but have compassion and they sit with you. It's amazing in secret knock, you may have a billionaire sitting next to you and you wouldn't even know. Mm. Yeah, uh, it, 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 the whole idea is uh, even at our events, our only rule is be cool. Wait, what does that mean? Look, if the water runs out, don't complain, go get some water and then bring it back to the table, be normal, right? If trash yeah. is on the floor, throw it away, just, just be normal. And that's our mindset. And by the way, I, speaking of that, I got to get back to my people that are of here. Of course, of course. From India. So, any last question that I can answer for you? Yes. Would you complete the sentence? Greg is a great father. Thank you so much for this opportunity, for this interview, and for who you are, making an impact in the lives of so many. And for all our viewers, thank you very much for being here. Uh, I look forward for our next uh, interview. And Greg, again, thank you. Until we see you next week, God bless you. And may the universal light surround you always. Keep smiling. Thank you for being here. If you want to check out some of the testimonials that I've got, click right here. But if you want to go back and watch other videos from a week ago, two weeks ago, even a year ago, click right here next time.